Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Adam Casanelli, and thanks for joining our um, our webinar here. Uh, we're all with the Martindale AVO Group now, uh, which is also known as the Martindale Legal Marketing Network. And we were a panel that uh, did a presentation at NACBA in April out in Denver. And uh, we're going to kind of refresh your memories of these. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, we'll get to those too. But uh, we're going to essentially give you 40 tips on how to grow your practice. So on those 40 tips, what you need to know is that uh, there's 1.3 million total attorneys out there in the United States and 500,000 of them are small law firms. So it's hard to imagine exactly how many of these practice bankruptcy law, but it's very important to make sure that uh, your practice stands out and is different from everyone else. So on average, uh, the consumer might view somewhere between four to five legal websites before they decide they want to make contact with an attorney. So obviously having a website is very important to your business. I think at this point uh, everybody understands that. If you, if you don't have a website, that's definitely something you'll, you'll want to look into doing. But uh, you want to make sure that the, the people when they get to your site are not just clicking the back button and looking at someone else's. The whole goal of someone getting to your site is you paid for them to get there. Now let's make sure that uh, we get them to contact you. So on our panel today, we have myself, I'm Adam Castanelli, Regional Sales Manager with uh, MartindaleHubbleLawyers.com. We have Ann Shaw, who's actually a practicing attorney with uh, Shaw and & Croson. And then we also have Brett Witten, who's an account manager with our Martindale Engage live chat product. And then uh, VP of Operations at Martindale NOLO, Chelsea Langan. So what we're going to do is each give you 10 tips. and. Um, if you have any questions along the way, the rules are pretty simple. What we do is uh, we'll all give you these tips. I don't have my gavel because this is a webinar, but in person I would be banging it when the time's up. Uh, we have a Q&A time built in at the end of the presentation, so if you uh, have any questions, feel free to enter those questions on the GoToWebinar control panel. There should be a questions tab, and if you enter those, they will be presented to me to, to re-go back to at the end. So. Uh, lastly, a recording of the presentation will be emailed uh, following this webinar. So if you forget something, uh, you can go right back to it. So without further ado, we're going to go over to Ann Shaw. And uh, Ann, take it away with your 10 tips. It's afternoon here, so good afternoon. We keep a kaleidoscope in our office. When clients stress over bankruptcy, we hand them the kaleidoscope. Change your perspective just a little and everything you see changes. For perspective on what I'm sharing, you need to know something about me. I am one half of a law firm in a semi-rural semi area. I'm about 90% of the marketing department, and are we ever low budget? So from there, next, next slide. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Tip one, know your stuff. The Chesapeake Bay is a shallow and can be a treacherous body of water. James Mitcher in his epic Chesapeake includes this Know Your Stuff story. An extravagant yacht had gone aground on the mudflats. The only hope in sight was a shabby skipjack crewed by watermen. One of them yelled to the yacht's captain, I can get you off for 50 bucks, a vast sum then. The watermen affected a tricky but very quick maneuver and feed the yacht. yacht. Then, of course, the yacht captain balked at the $50 tab. That's a lot of money for six minutes work. The watermen's retort, it's $5 for doing and 45 for knowing how. Where is your value? It's in the knowing how. Step forward first with your amazing competence. Know your stuff. Next slide. <laughs> Tip two. Honesty is still the best policy. First, let's be honest with our prospective clients. If they seem to qualify for legal aid, send them there. If they're judgment-proof, tell them that. Next, be careful what you put out there. True story and why the integrity of your website provider can be crucial. 
Maybe there is a perception that bankruptcy is just sticking numbers on forms. One attorney here decided that he was an overnight bankruptcy expert. He threw up a website claiming that he handled Chapter 11, 13, and 11. It declared that he had helped thousands of debtors get their fresh start. But the local bankruptcy bar knew he'd never even handled one single case. Letters were written, though not by me. The new bankruptcy wonder kid filed zero bankruptcies before he left town. Can we throw in a word for ethics here, too? Advance? Next slide. <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> Tip three. Count on your courage. Social media. Lawyers don't do social media. Then, about two years ago, a PC, potential client, consulted me about a new business idea he had, and we became his first client. About a year later, we turned our backs on all conventional advertising. Remember, we're low budget. When I kept dodging the calls of the local book reps, two of them descended upon me in my office. They threatened that nobody could find me if we didn't spend the big bucks on a local book ad. I picked up my cell phone to show them. As gently as I could, I told them they were obsolete. It took courage to turn our backs on the path, but it seems to be working. Next slide. Ah, we're getting there. Yay. Still, figure out Facebook. So now we have a Facebook publisher. Why pay him to do what we can do? Because now we can't. Facebook wording and boosting has become tricky. It takes more time to figure it out now. Besides, what he charges us is de minimis. Then he fixes and embellishes what I send. He also does Twitter. And one day I was surprised to find out I had a blog. After we hired Rick, I went to first-time Facebook school. The first three words out of the instructor's mouth were puppies and babies. Our challenge is that we can't do posts about our clients. We do lots of puppies, no babies. I make most of the original posts. We import others, press releases, community stuff. When my muse runs off, I am grateful for the social starters from Martindale Hubble. Always personalize the message. But Facebook, privacy, when you post, you publish. You're in the public domain. Think. Next slide. <laughs> Tip five, build a team. Our firm sits on a four-legged stool. Our website, our social media, our videos, and getting out there. I just happen to love our website, though Michael deserves credit for its trendy look. I wrote most of it, but Martindale Hubble helped with design and the SEO part. Our Facebook publisher, Rick, was just a piece of good luck. Sean, who does our videos, Thought he was an IT guy until I asked him to do a video as a favor. Right place, right time, right teammates. Every member of our firm and their pets have been on our Facebook page and in our videos. Can everybody have such good luck? There are some packages out there. Or if your staff is bigger than ours, maybe someone in-house can handle social media. And one of our best videos, Michael took on his phone and dressed up for posting. No doubt most of you know how to edit videos on your own phone. You don't get our team, but you can build a team. Next slide. Tip six, depend on Darwin. Darwin, survival of the fittest, right? No. Evolution, survival of the most adaptable. The American house dog, one of the most successful animal adaptations ever. Do well in the adoption lottery, go home and be pampered. No foraging for food, eat better than the humans who feed you. And the hardest thing you ever need to learn, 
is not to pee in the house. I have a kaleidoscope in the office, but no crystal ball. Who needs a crystal ball to know that tomorrow will be different than today? Facebook, now controversial. There's Instagram, Twitter. Maybe we'll all need to be on Home Shopping Channel. Next, every time somebody's credit card gets turned down, your ad can pop up on their phone, and that phone will automatically call your office. Whatever comes, you can adapt. You can learn not to pee in the house. Next. Ah, we're already at next. Show a little star quality. I do dog and pony shows. I'll speak for almost any group, almost any time, on almost any subject. That's how I ended up doing this, my first webinar. These dog and pony shows have comet-like tales. I'll ask a PC, why did you come to see me? I'll hear, four or five years ago, I was in a class you taught and. Not everybody wants or can public speak. My business partner, Michael, has a different talent. He can stop for a drink after work Friday and come in Monday with a new client. You have star quality. Show it. Make your PCs not want a lawyer, but want you. And star in your community. You can do well by doing good. We help with pro bono foreclosure prevention. We donate time to our local Habitat for Humanity. Even if your heart just isn't into helping people, your name gets out there, and it gives you something to post on Facebook. Next. <laughs> Covet your money and your time. Whether your firm is two attorneys or 20, you have finite resources. I was offered a more professional social media plan than we have now. The cost was only about 10 times more. We had a different website provider that only charged about twice what we're paying now and wasn't half as good. Another lo local lawyer hired a New York company to make a video for him. That cost him nearly 20 times what we pay, though it is really professional looking. On a beer budget, we're getting champagne results. My grandmother said, use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without. We don't go quite that far, but we do reuse and recycle. The Bankruptcy 101 PowerPoint for the Bar Association became a segment of legal update for realtors. A video for security title got reworked for Halloween. And some of these tips will get rewrites for Facebook posts. You can get more stuff out there if you reuse the same stuff. And revising takes less time than creating. New slide. Find what works for you. Facebook School 2018. Use Facebook technology to hound every single person who ever looked at your Facebook post and pinpoint every specific PC. The instructor hinted that the setup was only about $35,000. Not for me. Recently, we did something radical. We sent real letters to PCs who had come for a consultation but had not come back yet. Why do I think what we're doing works for us? Truth, about 50% of our new clients are referred by old clients. But we had to get those clients first. And we need new clients that will become old clients. I asked all new clients why they come to us in particular. After referrals, the second biggest answer I get is, I Googled. We don't pay for Google ads, so. But keep perspective. We are a two-lawyer firm in a semi-rural area. What works for us might not work for you. Find what works for you. I can't believe I'm to tip number 10. New slide. <laughs> Anything I can do, you can do better. What I learned in law school, all you can do is the best you can do with what you have in the time available. 
what we're doing is cheap and it's haphazard. I get and sometimes even read the emailed marketing tips from Martindale Hubble and don't even try to do all that. Sometimes we have the worst of all possible marketing, dead time, when we're too busy to get anything new out there. Rick recycles for us. What I learned working my way through law school, yard by yard, life is hard. Inch by inch, life's a cinch. You don't have to start by doing everything. You can just do something. But you probably have more energy than me. You probably know more about Google and social media than me. Your phone's probably smarter than mine. You can do better than me. Yes, you can. Next slide, I'm done. And now you have Brett Witten. Hey guys, uh, this is Brett Witten. Um, I handle a lot of the uh, Engage Live chat accounts. I uh, actually was there uh, at the conference. I don't know if you might have seen me talk, but uh, try to try to be just as good as last time. Um, first slide. Um, one of the things that I see firms do a lot is uh, they they try to do everything themselves and when you're a busy attorney running a law firm, um, it, it's kind of hard to be able to make informed decisions and do the proper amount of research when you're dealing with clients all day. So make that kind of stuff someone's job. And um, that way they can do all the research and then you can come in and make an informed decision. Um, and with that in mind, um, keep, or be aware of any SEO or pay-per-click company that tries to promise you the world in one day. Uh, there's there's companies out there that'll say they'll put you on the first page of Google in a month or a week. Don't don't take that seriously. Take that with a grain of salt, because um, usually the higher the promise, the, uh, the worse the results. All right, so oh, I skipped one. Um, Next slide is um, one of the things that uh, I see a lot of firms do that is very easy to get right, but they still mess it up, is that they don't have uh, a phone number that's easy to find on their website. So you got you to gotta keep in mind that these people that are finding you don't know you from Adam or the next 10 law firms on Google. So if you don't have a phone number that's right there at the top of your page that's easy to find, if they have to actually really look around to try to find a way to contact you, there's there's no motivation for them to, to spend any time doing that when the next site probably has a phone number that's easy to find. Um, that goes for your mobile site. Make sure it's friendly and easy to use and that there's a contact form that's right there in front that doesn't have 20 questions on it. Make it easy. Name their problem, phone number, email, get in, get out, because like I said, if they don't know you from the next firm, there's they don't really have a lot of motivation to try to answer 20 questions for you. Next, be human. Um, in chat, we, we look at a lot of the analytics and what we've seen is that um, the bio page is actually the second most visited page on the site. So they hit the home page, First thing they do is they go to the bio page. They want to see who they're contacting. And uh, I see a lot of attorneys that will put all of their credentials in their, their profile, which is great, shows that you know what you're doing, but there's, there's a subset of people out there that they want to have a, a human connection. They want to know that you're not some big bad attorney that they should be afraid of, that you are a real person, you have a life. So if you, if you like baseball, if you help out with your kids' uh, uh, little league, or if you volunteer with something in town, or you like running marathons, put that in there. Let them have some sort of a connection with you because there are people that will make a decision on whether or not to call you based on what they read in your profile, and you can never have too much. Next, 
Um, goes back to what I said earlier about uh, the visitor, odds are, if they're not a referral, they don't know you from anyone. And heck, even if they are a referral, um, give them a good reason to contact you. If you've got some, some good results, uh, some great reviews, uh, client testimonials, put that out there, make it easy to find. Um, like it says, puff out your chest, show them that you are better than the next guy and give them a reason to contact you. Play easy to get. Um, one, <laughs> one of the things, like I was saying earlier, make it easy for them to contact you. If they have to go looking around your site for a contact form that's hidden somewhere, they they don't want to do that. So uh, if you make it nice and easy, have a contact form right up top where they don't have to try to contact you, um, that, that helps tremendously. Uh, live chat helps. There's a subset of people out there that for whatever reason the live chat appeals to. I personally am not the type to use it. I'm the one that'll pick up the phone, but there's people that, I mean, if you think about it, um, they might be at work researching their bankruptcy and they don't want to talk about how they are over their heads in debt in front of all their coworkers. So give them ways. Um, next. So um, one thing that I hear a lot of attorneys mess up is um, they don't answer their phones or they have a phone that goes to a, straight to a voice prompt. Um, I'm, keep, I'm gonna keep harping on this. These people don't know you. So if they have to go through five steps just to leave you a voicemail, probably gonna hang up. There's a lot of very, uh, I say, very inexpensive and easy to set up services that if you aren't available to answer, or you don't have a receptionist, you can get a virtual receptionist that will allow that person to contact get in contact with someone because even if it's not an attorney that they talk to directly um, just getting on the phone with someone and possibly even setting an appointment can and will keep them from contacting the next firm on google um, another thing that's easy to do is um, Use, a, use an auto reply. Um, so if someone contacts you, say they uh, fill out a contact form, set it up to where you send them an email right away. If you, if you for whatever reason, cannot give them a call, um, you're, you're in court or whatever, if you send them an email back or a text, there's easy ways you can uh, set up like a Google voice number that you can text from so they don't have your actual cell so they're not calling you in the middle of the night um, anything that they get right back uh, will help keep them from going to uh, another firm because if they know that somebody's going to be getting back with them it, it really helps uh, one thing we do with the chat is we we connect the visitors to the um, to the intake line during the chat so if you think about it if you get somebody on the phone right away, you set that appointment, they don't have a chance to go anywhere else. Basically sold, if, if you can sell. Um, be persistent. Um, this is probably the, the biggest one on here. Um, I have talked to so many attorneys that will only try once or twice when somebody reaches out to them. Um, you need to be calling until they say no. Um, call, send an email, send a text. Call, send an email, send a text. Have a schedule um, because this is sales and they probably have contacted several other law firms and um, or they're, they're just busy and um, sometimes they don't have a chance to call you back right away. So if you just give up on them, you could be giving up on a very good lead because you're running pay-per-click ads, those clicks are expensive, you've already paid for it, you might as well exhaust it, make them tell you no. Um, one example I used, um, I know I mentioned this uh, back at NACBA, uh, there's a company that I've worked with on a couple of clients that 
this is an injury client, but it's still relevant. Um, this firm, this was back in the fall of 2017, uh, sent all of their 2016 leads to this company. They're called ICE, uh, Intake Conversion Experts. Anyway, 1,000 leads that they had given up on, this company was able to sign up around 200 of them. These are leads that they had tried a couple of times and just assumed that, oh, well, I guess they signed up with another firm or I guess they didn't really need a lawyer. These people were very persistent and it turns out they still did need a lawyer and they signed up a bunch of them. And these are guys that are running TV ads and paying a lot, a lot more for a click than you are. So um, just goes to show how much you probably are giving up on if you aren't trying that that often. Um, when you're talking to people, uh, I use this. Uh, I can use this as an example in the way that I sell. Um, these people, a lot of times when they uh, when they call in, they're closed off. And if you just ans ask them a bunch of questions that they could answer in one word answers, yes or no, um, it's a lot harder to get them to open up. So if you um, if you ask them questions that are open-ended that lead them to open up about their situation. Um, it's a lot easier to get a lot more out of them and it'll be a lot easier for you to help them. Um, this is what we do in the live chat. Uh, if you see any of our conversations, they're never uh, closed in closed questions because um, we want the visitor to give us as much information as possible to help qualify that lead. So every one of our questions is open-ended and you'll see a lot a longer and a lot more detailed responses because of that. Um, super easy, uh, super easy to fix. One thing that I see probably on about a third of the websites I visit. Um, if you go to your site and right there in the, um, the URL bar or the address bar, if you see a not secure by it, that is a gigantic red flag for most people that know anything um, and these people are are giving confidential information very personal information on a site and they want it to be secure so personally from my experience if I went to a site and I was giving out all my contact information and it said not secure I would go to another site uh, I've seen sites where you go to enter something into the contact form and when you hit submit it pops up and says, this website is not secure. Are you sure you want to continue? I mean, put yourself in the, uh, in the visitor's shoes. Would you give any sort of contact information when you hear that? If your site, if that fits anything with your site, you should contact your web guy. Uh, you can get a, a security certificate for like 100 bucks a month, something like that, super cheap. And all you have to do is uh, sign up one person that probably would have been chased off by it to make it well worth it. Um, that's it for me. Uh, next, we have Chelsea with uh, NOLO. Great. Thanks, Brett. Uh, I'm Chelsea Langan, and I am the VP of Sales and Operations for Martindale NOLO. We help attorneys across 55 different practice areas, including bankruptcy, uh, generate new clients, and build their practice with our targeted pay per lead program. So let's get started here with, the, with my top 10 tips. Uh, tip one is spend money where you make money. You know, just like you track billable hours, you need to track where you're spending both time and money on your specific marketing efforts so that you can really only focus your energy and your, and your spend where you're getting the best return. I know it seems simple, but this is, this is a place where I um, get a lot of questions from attorneys and they just don't do a great job at tracking this. Next tip here uh, is around uh, what options there are for uh, market, online marketing activities and which ones are the best performing. So um, lead generation services that uh, include things like paper lead services and online legal directories historically have been the top performing uh, based on the attorneys that we have um, uh, surveyed. And that's followed by things like SEM and SEO and social media and print. But I think what you want to focus on here is, you know, are you utilizing any of these services? If you're not, your competitors are, and it's helping them gain market share. 
how many attempts, and this kind of goes back to a little bit about what Brett was talking about. You should be following up on every single lead, regardless of their source, uh, or what information is filled out on the form that was submitted or that you received. Um, a lot of times, a lot of the good information isn't submitted there, again, because they don't always know who's going to be receiving the information on the other line, or maybe they're just not comfortable telling the full story. Um, and you should really be following up with them at least seven to ten times before moving them into some sort of drip marketing or nurturing campaign <clears throat> if, you don't get a, if you don't get a firm response. Um, and two to three of those follow-ups should be in the first day using multiple contact methods. This is one of the most common questions that I get. How many leads does it take for a new customer of ours to retain their first client? Um, I can tell you with our program, uh, when you average it across all the different practice areas that we cover, it takes about 13.6 leads and 28.4 days on our shared program. However, we do offer exclusive as well, um, and with that, it's 12.2 leads and 27 days. So as you can see, there's not a huge difference. So what's the, what's the takeaway here? Well, the takeaway is there's really no difference between shared and exclusive lead programs when it comes to how many leads and how many days does it take to retain a client. It's really around intake or lack thereof that's going to make or break your success. Um, and finally, I'm going to leave you with one other stat here on this, um, and it's specifically related to bankruptcy. <clears throat> so on average, it takes 17 leads and 32 days for a new bankruptcy customer of ours. Uh, on our shared lead program to retain their first clients. The most successful attorneys follow up on prospects within five minutes of receiving an inquiry um, or a max of 15. And, and I know it's hard a lot of times when we're, at, when we're in the office and we're busy or we've got clients that we're talking to you or talking to. But you, know, you should know that the average consumer contacts at least three attorneys before hiring one. So the longer you wait, the greater the chances are that your competition has already contacted your prospective client. So follow up as quickly as possible. Um, and you know, as uh, indicated earlier, delegate additional staff in your office to help or handle the intake or follow up process for the inquiries that you do receive. My next tip is especially true in uh, certain practice areas that are less time sensitive. Um, your leads may not be ready to convert right away. So you should be spending about 30% of your time nurturing them if they're not immediately responsive. Uh, and one way to do that is to use technology like email automation, blogging, and social media, uh, as well as text and others to really stay in front of your prospects and top of mind so they make a commitment to hire you when the time is right. We have a lot of resources today for contacting with prospective clients. Um, you want to make sure that you know we've got the, the existing, the phone and the email, but I want to make sure that everybody's aware of the power of text messaging to really get that initial consultation scheduled and confirmed. Uh, and I, I would challenge you to ask yourself if you're using all three. You know, Brett mentioned earlier, um, you know, the importance of getting out in front of the individuals and. Oftentimes, they, you know, they may be at work, so that's why they engage in a chat. Well, it's kind of the same thing with any other inquiry. They may not want to have somebody call them, even though you're responding within three minutes. They may not take the call because they don't want their cube mate to know that they're filing for bankruptcy. So be consistent. And, um, so the ABA did a really interesting study on intake, and it found that out of 17,000 calls, only 9% resulted in the callers actually speaking with an attorney, um, and 2% 2 of those respondents uh, took at least three days to respond. And only 55% asked for the phone number, uh, and 14% asked for the email of the caller. We can do better and you need to do better because your competitors are. Remember that first conversation is the first impression and you only get one chance to make a first impression. Twenty-one percent of consumers hire an attorney within one week. I'm going to say that again because it's important. Twenty-one percent of consumers hire an attorney within one week. 
again, this gets back to make sure you're working every single inquiry consistently um, and often, especially during that first week, and don't give up if they don't give you an immediate reply back. Try, try, try again. Uh, and I'll leave you with this one final tip. It actually ties back to my first tip of spending money where you make money. Marketing efforts aren't a set it and forget it activity. Uh, you should make sure that you're investing in a CRM or some sort of intake management system to help you keep track of your prospective client pipeline. Uh, and you want to be looking at this by source, um, you know, maybe geo if you if you cover you know outside of just your traditional city or county. Um, and it's really going to help you determine where to allocate and adjust your marketing dollars based on each source's performance. All right, thank you. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Adam Casanelli. Hey, everybody. Uh, back from the start. Um, but, yeah, so my name is Adam Casanelli. I'm a regional sales manager with Martindale Hubble. We also run Lawyers.com. Those are the main legal directories. Um, so I'll kind of get into my tips here. The first one is uh, you got to own it. So there's a lot of things you can do out there online that uh, don't cost you a penny. One of them is claiming your Google My Business profile. Uh, if you haven't done it yet, you can just search for yourself on Google, see what comes up on the right side there. It should have your office location, uh, links to your website. Um, Google scrubs for that, but if it looks pretty uh, – not filled out, you and there's even a button that says, is this your business or do you own this business? You can click to claim it. The only thing that you need is a, a Gmail uh, address and you can start building it out to your liking. Uh, if you don't find yourself on the map, you just go to Google and type in Google My Business and uh, you can actually build a, uh, a page for uh, your company, your site and start getting reviews in there. So that's one of the main things that I tell people to do if they haven't done it already. Uh, my next slide is uh, linking up. So when it comes to linking up your website, there's plenty of powerful uh, directories that can provide good, like SEO juice, we call it, to your website. Obviously, some of them are lawyers.com, martindale.com, avo.com, nolo.com. All of these are good quality SEO links that uh, you want going into your site. And there's although there's no way to determine exactly what the exact benefit is. Like, it's not going to be like, hey, I went from ranking here to ranking there. Uh, it's always good to have quality, authoritative sites linking to your site. So um, some of these directory sites cost money, some don't. Uh, usually the better the site, the higher the power, uh, the more likely it is to cost something. So uh, my next slide is uh, knowing the intentions. Of, uh, of what the person doing the search is out there. So you wanna make sure that your website is found by the search engines. Uh, you wanna make sure that it's content written for your potential customer. So when we're talking about the bankruptcy field, making sure that people can very easily understand the differences between uh, foreclosure, chapter seven, chapter 13, what those things all mean to them. So you wanna make sure that you uh, learn about their, their topics, other topics of interest, uh, predict what they might already know, and provide that in the content of your website. Next tip, uh, quantity versus quality. So a quality website uh, with quality content is actually critical for Google. So a lot of people always talk to me on the phone and say, hey, how do I get higher and higher up the page on Google organically? Well, Making sure that you don't leave the same content that was written 10 years ago on your page is, is one of those main factors. So you want to make sure that you have quality content, internal links that bring people from a main practice area page to something maybe more specific uh, within your own site. So if you have a page for bankruptcy and you start talking about Chapter 7 and Chapter 13 on it, uh, developing content that is strictly tied to Chapter 7 and 13 would be a great example of having those built. Uh, you can write content for each of them and then have pages essentially on your site for those practice areas. Um, but, uh, yeah, you should definitely have a page of robust content for each individual practice area you can think of that you handle. So my next slide is uh, avoid legalese. So you want to make sure that you're using language 
spoken by your clients and your prospects. Try to stay away from legal jargon. Um, again, you know better than anyone else who your typical client is and how to, to resonate with them. Um, but you want to make sure that, uh, I don't know, in, in the bankruptcy realm, I think people are looking for someone who can kind of empathize with them and uh, be in their corner, but also lay out their options for them. Um, so uh, they're not necessarily the same people that are looking for uh, a litigation attorney or something like that. They're looking for someone that can just simply put out there exactly what their options are and which one you'd recommend going with moving forward. Tip number 36, be certified fresh. 93% uh, of consumers do read reviews online. Um, whether you're talking about a law firm or where you want to go grab dinner, chances are everyone has done a search on Yelp or on Google and looked at somebody's reviews and determined before even diving into it whether or not they're going to look at the menu or call that place. So uh, best thing you can do is actually go do a search for yourself online, maybe click around to Google and these other legal directories too, and see what reviews you might have out there. Uh, if your firm doesn't have any online reviews, that could be an issue because uh, when people get to most of these legal sites, they're going to work from the top to the bottom of that page and determine who they're going to call based off a couple of things. Attorney photo is one, reviews is one, how built out your profile is one. But uh, it always helps to have reviews because people definitely feel much more comfortable with a firm that other people have already taken the time to say, yes, I recommend them. Next tip, free consultations, or is this just free advice? So you need to draw a line where the free legal advice ends. Uh, I talk with attorneys that tell me to activate and remove their free consultations button on their profiles all the time. And the main reason for that is they find out that they're giving away too much of their time for people that just don't have the money uh, to potentially file or they just don't qualify it for it. So one of the things that I tell people to make sure that they're doing is kind of drawing a line where uh, you're not spending more than, say, five to ten minutes with somebody on the phone asking them uh, probing questions about their situation uh, before actually getting them to come in and sit down because like in just normal sales, that consultation is where you're really going to sell yourself on why they should go with you instead of at somebody else. And in the realm of bankruptcy, again, there's not too big a price variation of what people are going to charge. So really, it's about making sure that they feel comfortable with you versus someone else that they called. And a lot of the time, that can happen by getting them in front of you. Tip 38, we're getting to the end here. Uh, cast a wide net. You want to make sure that Internet is not your sole provider of new leads coming in. Uh, you want to make sure that you have a strong network of referral sources, uh, other lawyers that maybe practice other areas of law, CPAs, real estate agents, auto dealers, financial planners, lenders, anyone working with credit reports is a good person to network with uh, because it just makes sense that uh, they may be in a position where they have to talk with someone about uh, bankruptcy options. So making sure that, especially in your local area, you're talking to everybody uh, makes a lot of sense. Uh, tip 39, find a common thread. So while networking may not come easy to you, uh, it might be more smoothly if you find a common thread with one of your potential clients. They hire you because they like you and they find something common between themselves and you as their potential attorney. So uh, I know for me, uh, I like sports. My common thread that when I'm talking with attorneys is usually uh, sports-based. I'll see somebody at a trade show that's got uh, their city listed underneath their name, and because I know way too much about sports, I might bring something up and hope that they have that common thread as well. And then my last tip here that we have is uh, you want to be the solution. I put TCB on here, which stands for taking care of business. Uh, to bring in a new client, you've got to motivate them to take action. A lot of people will just sit on their hands. Uh, they may make a phone call. They may do a chat. They may send an email. But you need to have a strategy and a solution to their problem to make them feel better uh, and give them a reason that they need to take action. Laying out all those options of what potentially could happen if they don't take action is, uh, is something that sometimes it might be a hard truth, but it's a truth that these uh, folks inquiring need to know. So that's all the, 
the tips that we have, all 40 of them, uh, in terms of, of questions, um, it looks like we have one here for Brett with Engage. It said, uh, what does the chat cost and are there any commitments to it? So Brett, do you want to kind of tackle that? Yeah, sure. Uh, so we, uh, we don't charge any kind of an activation if you're already working with uh, Martindale, uh, any of the Martindale or Avo divisions. Uh, and we don't have any set monthly fees. Uh, we charge on a qualified lead basis. So what that means is we'll send uh, a transcript of every chat we complete uh, within three to five minutes of the chat. And um, we don't do any filtering because we don't want Bob the operator trying to decide what's a good lead for the firm. Um, I like to use the rule of thumb that if you get a lead that based on what the visitor said, you think is worth your time to follow up with uh, because you think you can help them, uh, that's 35 bucks. Um, if it's something that you don't handle, um, they're not in an area where you would take a client, uh, somebody you've talked to before, or it's clear they're just looking for free advice, uh, there, there's a button in the email that you can use to take it off your bill. Um, Say the average firm sees maybe uh, uh, five to ten additional opportunities a month from the chat. So it's not something that's going to uh, change your practice overnight. But the the firms that I'm working with are just saying that they they see more opportunities at the end of the month with it than without. Um, and we ask that you try it for 90 days, and then after that, it's month to month. Cool. Um... Thanks, Brett. The, the next question in the queue is actually for Chelsea. Uh, Chelsea, question in here was, typically how many leads does it take uh, when they're shared leads to land a new bankruptcy client? Sure, good question. Um, so for bankruptcy, 17 leads and 32 days. So, you know, again, not all attorneys do intake as well as others. Um, so your experience could be a little bit different, but uh, 17 leads in 32 days is the average. Perfect. Um, and then there was a side follow-up question. It said, does that number go down and how many it takes if there's no one else servicing like the area, I guess? Um, I don't necessarily track it that way, but if I look at it just kind of bubbled up across all of our practice areas, um, it's so I'm mean, just going to throw out some numbers here. So, um, on the shared lead program, it's 13.6 leads. So, irrespective of whether it's a bankruptcy lead, DUI, personal injury, etc., um, and 28.4 days. But for an exclusive lead, it's 12.2 leads. So, it's the difference of 1.4 leads between shared and exclusive. So, it's pretty minimal again. Having a good, solid intake process, whether it's you or you're delegating or it's a team, um, is really where it's, it's really where you're going to make or break your success. Perfect. Uh, next question is actually pretty broad. It just says, "I don't like my website. Uh, do you offer those solutions?" Uh, yes, uh, our whole company offers solutions. Um, we actually prefer to, and most of our clients are. Uh, solo practitioners or smaller firms that are looking for an outlet that's not going to break the bank, um, and that's pretty much why they come to us. And then the last question I had on here was actually for Anne. So, uh, Anne, if you're here with us uh, from the first slides, it just said, um, how long have you been with the Martindale-Hubble uh, legal network, and what products specifically do you use? Okay. I think I've been with Martindale-Hubble about three years now, uh, I have the website. We have the website. Uh, I think I'm on lawyers.com. Um, there's something else having to do with various counties that I'm on. Um, right now, Martindale Hubble is my only web presence, and I love it. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Um, well, that looks like those were the only questions kind of in the queue. So um, if you do have specific questions about any one of these 
uh, products or if you have questions. A lot of attorneys like to talk with other attorneys that are doing different things in the market. Um, we're going to send out a recording of this webinar. Um, feel free to reach out to any one of us uh, about any of those products if needed. We're going to make sure that we send out not only uh, like the names of the panelists, but also our email addresses and our phone numbers. Um, so that way, if you have any questions or you're interested in hearing more about a specific piece of uh, these tips, uh, you can reach out to us directly. So. Um, yeah, thank you for your time, everybody, for joining the webinar, and uh, feel free to, to reach out to any of us if you have any questions in the future moving forward. So thanks again, and um, thanks, panel, for being a, a part of this webinar. Thank you. Thank you.